I'm joined now by two Fox NFL analysts, Mark Slev and LeVar Arrington. But LeVar, let's start with you. You like Cam's mindset, saying he has nothing to prove? I, I like Cam's mindset for the simple fact that I know where he's coming from. When he says nobody, he's not talking about his teammates. He's not talking about the people that are going to be directly influenced by his influence. He's talking about the media. He's talking about the people who are naysaying him out in social media and in the fandom world. So to me, when he says, listen, if you're looking at me and you're basing your judgments off of what you view of me and what you think I have to be, no, he doesn't have anything to prove. And no, he doesn't have to prove it to nobody. So to me, I like the mindset, especially for the simple fact that he made it a clear point to say, listen, nobody is going to be harder on myself than myself. So I like it. I like the approach. And I believe as a leader, he's saying that in camp. So he's already had the necessary conversations that he's needed to have. Mm, I don't like it at all. And I, I expect these active players to go up there and pander and give podium talk and BS, but not retired players of our no way. Can we not keep it 100? <laughs> you know, there he says that he's not trying to prove anything to anybody. Nobody. Nobody. Now, we know the definition of nobody. That means any person, right? He says he doesn't want to go out there and prove anything to anybody. Is Bill Belichick somebody? Oh, oh, he, he is. Matters. He's somebody, He's somebody. right? Somebody. Um, uh, is Josh McDaniels somebody? Is Bob Kraft somebody? How about the very premise of athletics and competition is to work, 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 sometimes in silence, sometimes in private, so that you can go out there and prove to your opponent and the other team that you're actually better than them. So when I hear athletes saying, oh, man, it's all about me and I set the highest standards and who cares what everyone else thinks, come on, big dog. There's no way you even move up the pecking order, the depth chart. Remember, this is Bill Belichick in the Patriots way. The way he goes down is everybody has to earn their position. You only eat what you kill. And now you have nothing to prove to the person that's going to stand there in judgment about your career, your one-year audition to return to greatness? A lot of BS right here, big dog. Yeah, I, I got to say I'm with you 100%, Marcellus. Um, let me tell you this. Actions speak louder than words. What have your actions shown this whole offseason? Let me prove to you that I'm healthy. Let me prove to you that I can still throw. Let me prove to you that I can still move around. Let me prove to you that I was the player that I was in 2015, hmm. not the one you've seen the last two years and the season with injuries. I mean, the whole it's been a whole campaign of let me prove it to everybody. And I'm talking about social media. I'm talking about to all the media. I'm talking to everybody. Let me post the videos and let <laughs> me show right. you that I'm all right. I hope you want to prove it. I hope you are because you have to prove that you can stay healthy, number one. You have to prove that you were the guy in the first eight to ten games of the season, of the 2018 season, where you were exceptional from the pocket. You've got to continue to prove that because that right now is the outlier. So everything you've done this offseason is to prove to everybody out there on social media, everybody out there that talks about football, that you are different, that you can still play, that you are the guy you were that won an MVP. Well, let's see it. So, uh, like, to me, what you're saying, I only have to prove it to myself, and what you're doing aren't congruent. They're two totally different things. It's all about perspectives. I respectfully understand the point of view in which both of you have come from. Okay. But I still have to agree from my perspective. His storyline has never changed. The things that he was doing on social media, the things that he was proving and showing to were the people that truly matter. Those don't fall in the nobody lane. I know you used the, the guys, uh, Belichick and, and Kraft, and you brought them into the nobody conversation. But as I alluded to in my first point, those are people that matter within the parameters of what Cam is saying for himself, what he has to prove. So to uh. me, I look at it, listen, I look at it like this. This is the beauty of what Cam did, is that it is so cryptic in so many ways that, Mark, you could have it the way that you're thinking of it. Marcellus, you could think of it the way that you're thinking of it. I am. And the true interpretation of it, the true interpretation of it is Cam Newton is way too smart and bright of a young man to ever make the mistake of putting a quote like that out there in the stratosphere to be talked about and dissected knowing who he is without the right people knowing that they matter. It's like those Facebook messages. If you don't get a response from me, 
take that as a, a hint that, listen, you're just not important enough on my friends list <laughs> for me to be sending a message. You're not going to be on my replies list, my retweet. That's uh, all he's saying. Oh, uh, LeVar, stop. Now I got to cut you. Uh, Cam, Cam Newton, who is the homie, man. I love this dude. He knows it. I still got to do my job up here. Um, every other post, it seemed like it was a message to the haters. That's nobody. Oh, the message to the haters, and I quote, I have more for you. But that's nobody. Uh, he had a huge population of they. That's what blew DJ Khaled up. The they's of the world. Who the hell is they? And he kept talking to they. But now, since he got a gig, they're nobody. This takes me back to my childhood, man. I used to play with this little toy. We didn't have that many toys. But one of them was a speaking spell. Y'all remember that toy? That Hell, little, yeah, that I loved little, it. They had different <laughs> colors. Yeah, and you pull that little <laughs> string, and it had like 30 program messages in it. And that big-ass arrow just turn around and find the <laughs> land on it. And it just say whatever. It's so funny. Once you grab the speaking spell, a lot of these Patriot players, as soon as they get in that building, it just lands on podium talk. Oh, the Patriot <laughs> way. Oh, I only have anything to prove to myself and no one else. Cam Newton is not telling the truth. Cam Newton knows what's at stake this year. Not just trying to respond to the greatness of Tom Brady and continue that legacy in New England of great quarterback play, but this is a one-year audition for Cam to either return to an NFL MVP form and be thought of as a franchise quarterback or be who he's been the last year and a half, which has been Injury riddle, but compromise in terms of people perception. So when Cam knows that's at stake and then comes out there the entire offseason when he's unemployed, talking about haters and them and they, and all of a sudden now he gets a job and pulls the speaking spell string and just lands on this one, it doesn't land well for me. I just hope, here's what I hope for Cam Newton, because I've had the opportunity to do a couple of uh, Carolina games and talk to Cam Newton just one-on-one, -on -one, and he has grown up. I, and I really appreciate him taking responsibility and him growing up and, and maturing like we all do as we right. age. I mean, that's just, that's just what happens. Right. Um, but I hope he's got a giant size chip on his shoulder. I really do because I want to see, I want to see Cam Newton play great. I want to see him not only be the physical dominant player that he was back in 2015, but I want to see him combine that physical dominance with what I saw early in the 2018 season. Because if you get that in new England, guess what? The New England Patriots are winning that division again. Let's move to a quarterback who knows a thing or two about New England. The guy Cam is replacing in New England, Tom Brady. Led the Patriots to six Super Bowl titles and earned his reputation as the GOAT. Now Brady is leading a Bucks team that hasn't won a playoff game since 2002. Damn, that's when I was playing. So it's pretty obvious that adding Brady to the squad has expectations at an all-time high. So, LeVar, think Tom Brady gets a pass if the Bucks struggle this season? No. No, and, and listen, when, when this season takes place, there are so many reasons that you could give as to why it would be justified to give him a pass. But we all know that all the storylines are, are tracks, train tracks that are going to eventually come to one track, and, and we're going to find out which locomotive has the most strength and the most coal and got there first before all the other ones came there and wrecked. That, that figure of speech that I just used, <laughs> can Tom Brady do it without Bill Belichick? That's one of those cars. Can he, is he too old? That's one of those trains. The, the fact of the matter is, as much as you would like to give him a pass if he doesn't have a good year, based off of the, the COVID-19 pandemic, based off of mm. uncertainty of a, of a season, you're still going to think about Tom Brady and the, the success that he had with Bill Belichick, and now you'll say he was a system quarterback. It was Bill Belichick all along. You're not getting out of that shadow if you have a, a poor season. Oh, man. Got to disagree with you again. What the hell's going on okay. this Monday 8 Good. block right here? Hold Good. on. You just told me that Tom Brady won't get a pass if things don't work out as advertised in Tampa Bay. Have you ever heard of the word equity? Have you ever mm -hmm. heard of the word equity. That's going to be the yep, mattress he lands word. on. It's the equity. If all things go wrong in Tampa Bay, he will land on an equity mattress of six rings and nine Super Bowl appearances and say, hey, 
Every reason you just outlined, LeVar, talking about, oh, it was a compromise offseason, the pandemic, mm -hmm. really couldn't dive into the playbook and materialize it on the practice field. Everything you laid out is going to be a reason or excuse for Tom Brady to go out there and use his mulligan. Now, let's look at this situation for what it is. A GOAT switching a franchise. That happened in the NFL before. We all know what happened when we were talking about the great Joe Montana who found themselves in the Chiefs uniform. Now, everyone wants to talk about how, wow, that went well in terms of the win percentage, and he took them to the AFC Championship game. But people don't remember necessarily how that year ended. It ended with him going 9 of 23, 125 yards, no touchdowns, got beat by 17, and one interception against the Buffalo Bills. You think about that last game. And then you go into the offseason. Nobody was mad at Joe Montana. They was like, thank you for your services and thank you for taking us this far. You can go to other sports with Michael Jordan in the Wizards years. But if this year doesn't go as planned, as advertised, trust me, Tom Brady's just going to sit there and say, give me my mulligan and let's run it back next year. And I don't think anybody's going to blink an eye. See, I disagree. I think, Tom, I think Tom Brady's on the hook. I mean, I look at this team just in general. This team went 7-9 and nine last year with a quarterback that turned it over 39 times. <laughs> 39 turnovers, 30 interceptions, 9 fumbles. I mean, it is unbelievable. That's a playoff team. He's coming into one of the most loaded offenses when you talk about weapons with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, three tight ends, including Gronkowski, who came out of retirement to play with his buddy Tom Brady. There are no excuses. People have been trying to bury Tom Brady for the last four years and say, oh, he's too old, he's too this, he's too that. I listen, there are no excuses. And then you look at that Tampa Bay defense, young, everybody's a first, second, or third-year player on that defense. They are young, they are physical, they are athletic. They are going to run that Todd Bowles blitzing scheme. This is a team that's going to create turnovers and give Tom Brady opportunities with the football. I don't think there are any excuses for Tom Brady or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It is playoffs or bust, and if he doesn't make it to the playoffs, I think they're going to point the finger to Tom Brady. We hired you to come in here and take us to the playoffs. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. You're the quarterback that doesn't turn it over. You're smarter than everybody else. You're going to lead us to the promised land. If you don't get it done, then everybody will be saying, hey, Tom Brady, it's true. Tom Brady's falling off a cliff. He's, 30, or he's 43 years old. He can't play anymore. And I don't think there will be any sympathy for, for Tom Brady. The other thing they'll say is, oh, see, it was Bill Belichick. It wasn't yep. Tom Brady. I don't think yep. there's any excuses for Tom Brady. What? Go ahead, Marcellus. You want, you want to respond? Yeah, Go ahead. Let, I, you know how many NFL quarterbacks have finished a full season at the age of 43? None. Damn it. So you know what that's going to give Tom Brady? Once again, the, the, the opportunity to use the mulligan if necessary. Look at this situation for what it is. Tom Brady wants to go out there and prove that he's bigger than the New England Patriots and the Belichick, Brady, whole combo, and the the whole Brady in New England is the only way he's going to work as a system quarterback the Patriot way. He wants to go out there and prove it. Does he need to prove it? Did Joe Montana need to prove that he was still the great one? That he was the GOAT all the way until Tom Brady took the baton from him? Absolutely not. So Tom Brady's already made his impact. And you guys know that football at the professional level is a business first. Let's talk about the jersey sales. Oh, oh, let's talk about the ticket sales. I don't even know if these fans oh. going to be able to use these tickets, but they, gonna, they already purchased them. Let's talk about the five prime time games plus flex game opportunities that the Tampa Bay Bucks already have before they even snap the ball one time. And you're saying if he makes the playoffs, playoffs or bust. He's going to make the playoffs. I was thinking in the mindset of Super Bowl or bust because that's the standard for Tom Brady. So unless Marcellus, you're talking Super Bowls, you're not really talking Tom Brady language. You should have went to school for legal studies. You, you should that be lot. up in somebody's courtroom. Because <laughs> you would get some. You would have got ghost off in, in power, man. Like, it, that's out the power. You would have got him off because you love changing how, how the argument is used and discussed. Listen, if, well, if they sold all those things, Tickets and jerseys, that's wonderful. That's a beautiful thing. Oh, money doesn't but count. We're talking about if they struggled. Are you giving him a pass? 
fans aren't sitting there buying tickets and Tom Brady jerseys. And if he struggles during the year, they're still happy to put it on. They're going to go in their closet and they're going to be like, man, let me put Sapp's jersey back on. Let me, <laughs> let me throw Keyshawn's jersey or, or somebody. Because this ain't right what Tom Brady did to us. This ain't you tricked me into buying tickets. Let's talk about that mattress, that soft mattress of equity, the equity <laughs> match. Uh, here we go. That mattress, that mattress resides in one place called Foxborough, Boston, anywhere Stop. in that little area, that region. But one place that mattress is not going to be is in Tampa Bay, Florida. And, and to that I just point, hate- go ahead, go ahead, Mark. Go ahead, stay I just want to know one thing. If he stinks at 43, how's he going to mulligan at 44 in the Marcellus equation? Oh, they already like, gave him a stink. mulligan, stink. They, how long is the deal? How long is the deal? Anybody? Anybody? Two years? I bet you oh! get out of it quick. Two get years. Quick. 50 million fully guaranteed. They already built in a mulligan. Y'all just were sleeping on it, not reading the fine print of the contract. <laughs>